don't think I got enough brown in to begin with. Oh, that's a better color. Anyway, so good. Let's get in there. Basically, the thing with faux, and I've said this a million times in my life, it looks terrible until the second it doesn't. So we're just gonna like try to keep layering up until it actually gets to the place where I think it looks more like metal. What's up everybody? Welcome or welcome back to Copper Cactus DIY. I'm Jen and this is my home for all things furniture refinishing. In today's furniture makeover video, I'm working on this two drawer file cabinet. This is mine and I've had it for, I don't know, quite a number of years. It came from that popular Scandinavian company, <laughs> Ikea and I've just been trying to figure out what I want to do with this all this time. It's super functional, still works great, all the drawers open, the drawer slides are actually in terrific shape, and the drawers themselves are in terrific shape. Actually, the whole piece is in terrific shape. It's just kind of boring, ugly, and uh, absolutely in need of a full refresh. So if you're into furniture refinishing, furniture flips, and makeovers like this one, then be sure to click the big red subscribe button right down below and tap the bell and tap all. That way you get notified about all of my video uploads. I try to post every week and I'd love to have you here to join the fun time party. But I'm gonna stop blabbering now because it's time to absolutely get into this piece. It's a little cooler today in my garage. If you don't know, I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and this place is the surface of the sun. <laughs> and I'm gonna do my best to get through two coats of primer on this thing today, so it's time to get going. Let's just get into this. I'm just gonna open these drawers for ya. You can see it's, I mean, they're in great shape, like I said. I'll show you those drawer slides on this side too. I mean, it all looks great and it's in really good shape. This plastic is even still held together. This hardware is actually pretty cool. I like it. it's got that modern vibe of the flat hardware. I kind of love that, but I might spray paint it. We'll see. Top drawer, same deal. I already cleaned this thing out because um, I love you people, but I don't love you enough to share my banking information. You know what I'm saying? problem when it's on casters. Things try to roll away. Ah, yeah, that came off easy. Metal. I kept the hardware together in a small container. And I started cleaning by vacuuming out all the dust, even though I didn't plan to paint the inside of these drawers. To clean this piece, I'm going to use my generic degreasing soap. And as usual, a lint free rag with some warm, soapy water. After just that one scrub, you know. After scrubbing, I wiped down with a clean rag. I ended up doing two passes to remove all the soap. Okay, now that I've cleaned this piece, I am seeing even more issues. I don't know how well this is gonna come out on camera, but hopefully you can see how lumpy bumpy that is. This veneer on top, it's really bumpy. Uh, we're gonna see what happens there because like I said at the start here, I know it's MDF under this, so 
I'm gonna just have to go real slow and steady, but I've got to get that sanded down to flat and probably fill it in with some wood fills, so that's my next step. I went really light-handed with a 220 grit sheet on my mouse sander. I planned to scuff sand the entire surface, but started out on the damaged spot. It didn't take much to smooth the lumps, but I was really close to blowing through the veneer because it's so thin. I definitely didn't want to do that because the MDF could easily get damaged, or even just swell from the moisture of the paint. As I got around to the side, the wind shifted and started blowing the dust in my face, so I grabbed my mask and finished up with that on. I wiped down the dust with a damp rag. All right. Now that I'm done cleaning, I'm going to let this dry out completely, and then I'm going to come back and do some wood fill on the top. Unfortunately, I don't know where my small Japan scraper is, so I'm going to be using this Ace brand wood filler, but I'm going to just chunk it out of there with my finger, and I'll spread it out with my medium-sized Japan scraper. It's fine. It's no biggie. It's not like I can't wash my hands. All right. And now we let this dry. All right, I'm gonna use a 220 grit, an old squishy sanding sponge, just wrapped, and then I think you can probably already tell that there's a little more raised up than I wanted it to be. Hopefully that goes away. Hopefully you can hear me over the leaf blowing everywhere in the neighborhood right now. All right, let's do this. Not happening. All right, smooth. I vacuumed the excess dust, then clean water on a rag, a quick wipe across. It's damp, barely, and I'm not going to linger because I don't want it to take anything off in here. Yep. Okay, now I'll let that dry, and then it's time to fry. Time to prim. Time to prim. Okay, stop it. Okay, I am using Dixie Bell Boss in gray to prime this thing, and actually the boss might end up, the boss, <laughs> boss might end up being my actual face paint. Um, I have an idea for a finish that I really want to do on this thing and it needs this really good gray and I'm completely out of Traveler Blue and Melange because if you didn't see my video last week on the bookshelf, I only bought a teeny teeny tiny and I had a huge bookshelf and I was really hoping to get both of these pieces out of that container but that is just not going to happen so I might try to just use this. I made a sample board with this as the base paint and it worked out pretty good. So I'm gonna get stirring, get pouring. I'm gonna use a one and a half inch angled purdy just to cut in. 
um, anywhere. You know, I can't get the roller and then just a fabric whiz roller to apply to all the flat areas. Wow, it is dry. Oh my God, yeah, I'm gonna have to work quick. Quick, quick, quickness. All right. And that's it. Everything else I can roll. So, oop, that's not true. <laughs> I can't roll this. Let me see. Did I already get paint on the casters? Oh, Jen. Okay. Seriously, Phoenix with the dust. I just wiped this down. <laughs> I finished the primer and left the file cabinet to dry until the next morning. There's still some raised areas here. Also, the wood grain is kind of peeking through, but I don't actually mind that. I just needed the boss to be on here to act as a base paint because what I'm gonna be doing on this cabinet, let's back up for a second here. <laughs> Um, about two weeks ago, when I first decided to do this cabinet, my first thought on this was doing a faux wood grain. So when I coated this thing in boss and a lot of these damage areas were starting to come up, I realized that the veneer is just so cheap and kind of falling apart that I really needed a finish that was gonna cover all of that. And I was not gonna see any of it, even if some of the gray was still peeking through. So in the end, what I've decided to go with here is a rusted iron cabinet. So I'm gonna faux this to look as if it was metal that's just been sitting out in like the desert sun or out at like a beach or something like that for basically ever. I'm going to get started on this starting on the back just so I can kind of like get my hand back because I haven't done patinaed metal in a really long time so I kind of want to like get my skills back up again before I just like dive in on the front of the drawer or whatever you're going to actually see. Um, so I'm just going to grab all of my paints. I am using an entire array of folk art chalk paints to do this job plus some other supplies and materials that I will leave down in the description and you guys can go check them out if you want to try to replicate this finish. Okay, I'm just gonna mix up a little bit. Good job. With, come on. <gasps> Touch of terracotta, like literally barely anything. Come on. Just want to have that reddish, orangey ish undertone in here because that's much more like a, a good patina here. All right. Then what we do, I'll just use the brush for now because I want to get that off of there, but you just dunk into the plate. And then you just basically put it on in humongous patches, swirling, stamping, stippling, trying to move your hand so that it doesn't all look the same. 
with some swirls. I'm also gonna try to get right into these grooves because I'm making this look like it's all one panel. That's my goal. All right, now, let's get in there really tight. I think I just got some on the other side, but that's all right. This is sort of a burnt umbery color just gonna soften out any areas that look a little too pointy or harsh and then get into all of this so it looks like it's one panel. And this is just like a car washing sponge so you don't need any fancy tools this part you can literally just pounce it right on it's a little darker than burnt umber but it does the job all right now get that all up in there and now we just leave it to dry which should only take about 25 seconds here in phoenix <laughs> your mileage may vary my next color will be the metallic copper Dip into the plate and then come in on the sides and sliding and overlapping. This one though should go all the way into the grooves. Some of the gray gets covered. Not all and some of the brown gets covered, also not all. And I'm just gonna come in on these air bubbles, which actually I think is kind of a cool, all right, let's wash that in there now. It's like a cool look because it'll actually give more of like a metallic vibe. So some of this is gonna be really thick other is not. And I don't have to have too much of the gray showing through, but I want little peaks here and there, just so it continues to feel natural. This iron will have some high and low spots, even if it's patinaed. All right, I don't hate that. Maybe a little helpful too because it really just adds to that entire vibe of patina and destructed metal over time. Pitted, running, rusty. She looks pretty destroyed. <laughs> That's gonna dry for a little while longer. I'll come back and uh, we'll do full part two. With the first layers dry, I tried coming in with the metallic silver like I'd done in the past, but this silver paint wasn't quite as thick and pigmented as I hoped, so it left more small bubbles than anything else. I tried a few places, but I just didn't love it. All right, I'm gonna come back in with a little more Java. And 
terracotta. We're gonna try to mix something here that makes more sense. I just, uh, I'm just gonna try this. We'll see how that works. Because I think I just need to do some layering here. I don't think I got enough brown in to begin with. Oh, that's a better color anyway, so good. Get in there. Basically, the thing with faux, and I've said this a million times in my life, it looks terrible until the second it doesn't. So we're just gonna like try to keep layering up until it actually gets to the place where I think it looks more like metal. So I spent about 10 minutes mixing and blending with the paint still wet so things would really meld together but not get too muddy. I started with the brown mix and added another layer. Then I came in with the copper and did the same. I went back and forth between the two colors for about three layers, making sure to keep some areas heavy and some areas lighter on the coverage. Good, so that's what I have to do on all of the sides. It's good to know. And we're gonna do a little bit more. Looking like it's dripping. All right, now I'm gonna let this fully dry and then I'm gonna come back in and put in some of the pitting marks with darker paint and lighter paint. And I'm not really gonna explain that. I'm just gonna kind of do it on camera. So one YouTube second for you, about a half hour or so for me. I used some dark gray chalk paint and mixed it with a drop of acrylic craft paint in black. I tapped one brush against the other and added some organic looking pitting marks. I also used an artist brush to break up some of the marks that looked just too perfect. Then I used a lighter cream colored chalk paint to add more corrosion marks in other areas. And I tapped them out with the sponge, sometimes a brush, and I even used my fingers until I was happy with how it looked. But this video is already pretty long, so let's just cut right over to the final look, shall we? Don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know what you think of how this piece turned out. And if you like furniture makeovers, feel free to subscribe. I try to post every week and would love to have you here. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. Later, peeps. Squealing out. Okay. How totally me would that have been if it actually hit this and then hit me directly in the face? Oh, ow. Okay. Enough. Enough. Oh, people say. No, 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 no. Oh my god, my feet. <laughs> I am too old to crouch forever. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, old lady sounds. Here we go. That's the great. Thank you for watching.
for waiting. Your painting job is important. Please continue to wipe down your piece. <laughs>